There is so much more we wanted to cover from our recent Assassin's Creed Mirage hands-on preview and in this video we're going to discuss and share our first impressions about two main aspects of the game, that is combat and some of the enemies you can face, and the game world, the maps we have tested and the information we were able to gather about them, plus a little mention about tutorials in the game and what has changed in the button mapping. So no time to waste, we have a lot to talk about, so let's dive into all the Assassin's Creed Mirage news. Before we get into combat and the game world, I wanted to tackle two topics that were meant to be discussed in our first video but we weren't able to fit them in. The first one is the tutorials and the gameplay changes that we have seen while testing Mirage, which you may experience too when you start a game. The tutorials in general in the game are pretty straightforward, with the unbar section teaching the basics of parkour, pickpocketing, stealth, eagle vision and the like. The part of the Anbar prologue that we tested included a tutorial mission that had Basim steal a ledger as part of a contract requested to Dorwish, one of Basim's allies since the start of the game, which allowed us to test the basics of stealth and assassination, though as Street Thief, at least in the early stages of the prologue, Basim can't really kill but only knock out guards, which should answer a dedicated question by Elena from our Discord server. The control scheme has changed a bit compared to Assassin's Creed Valhalla and that's mostly because we now have a dedicated button to open the tools wheel which is the right back trigger that is R2 or RT on consoles which means the heavy attack couldn't be mapped to that button anymore. So now the light and heavy attacks are confined to the same button, the right shoulder button that is R1 or RB where light attack is activated by just pressing the button and heavy attack is activated by holding it. Which took me a long time to get used to during my few combat phases and I'm still not sure if I'm a fan of this change or not. Other than that, it's mostly the same as Valhalla even though Eagle Vision has been confined to the left D-pad button because pushing the right stick, that is R or R3, is now dedicated to the Assassin's Focus ability and to locking targets in combat. Tutorials are also not thrown to you all at once at the start of the game. For example, after you start the parkour and stealth tutorial in Anbar, you will get the combat tutorial in Alamut along with the first eradication area type of mission where you have to eliminate all the enemies in a designated area the way you'd like. The other topic I wanted to discuss in our first preview video is combat and along with our own material about it we are going to feature some additional footage by Andy Reloads as he did test this system way more than I did in my playthrough so huge thanks to him and of course do check his coverage about Mirage 2, you can find his videos in the description. So combat in the game it's stripped to the basics, it is bringing back from the RPG games the parrying, dodge and roll mechanics that you can use based on the enemy's blows with parrying depleting the enemy's stamina and eventually allowing to counter kill them like in the original games, though I have to say that my main gripe with combat was that it took me quite a while to adjust to the heavy attack not having a dedicated button. As in the past games, we are going to have to keep our stamina bar in check, as dodging and rolling especially will consume a lot of it, but at the same time it does regenerate automatically and also by parrying enemy attacks, so I'd imagine it will be less of a worry as we get better with the combat system. The game allows you to also lock targets and switch from one to the other, though having to fight two or more enemies can be pretty tough at times. In fact, during our test, the enemies felt at times pretty tough to kill in combat, with my attacks removing only tiny slices of their health bar unless I use the heavy attack button. But this, honestly, it is by design. It has been mentioned by developers already and it's kinda whole point of not being a war machine like in the recent Assassin's Creed games, so it's not a bad thing per se for me. In general, if you get spotted, at least in the early phases of the game, you can try and fight one, maybe two guards, but if you get surrounded, it's best to heal yourself, which happens similarly to Valhalla, finding food in the world and healing yourself through elixirs, then find a way to hide and restart the stealth loop and I honestly very much prefer that. In terms of variety of enemies, I think I can't complain. There aren't as many types as in Valhalla, but there are enough types that can make it feel less repetitive, such as, at least to our knowledge, swordsmen, spearsmen, the elite and heavily armored captains that can still be one shot assassinated, marksmen who can incapacitate our eagle, the flamethrowing guard we saw in the trailers, and the elite Shakiria enemy. 
Enemies will also have a difficulty indicator over their head that basically compares how tough they are and your rank within the hidden ones in order to tell you immediately how dangerous they can be, even though I think they can still be one shot assassinated even if they outrank our current progression state. So yeah, in contrast with the recent releases of the franchise, it looks like combat is not the suggested approach to tackle the various situations and this also means that the gameplay philosophy doesn't really feel centered on combat too. Still, this doesn't mean that combat isn't a viable approach either, as Andy clearly showed. Once you master it, much like stealth was in Origins, Odyssey and Valhalla, it will probably be a feasible approach too, while always keeping you on the edge as Basim can die so very easily at any combat combat encounter. Now let's dive into the game world of Assassin's Creed Mirage, its locations and environments. I have to say the game looks very good, all things considered, and the design of the city and the villages contained in the map even improves on that, oftentimes providing amazing vistas after running across narrow streets and imposing buildings. Of course, while testing the game we had the chance to have a look at the map of the game and it is indeed the same area that was shown in the collectible map that was teased on the Amazon stores. While the city of Baghdad is located at the eastern center of the map, there is a whole area extending to the north which comprises the city of Anbar that is located in front of a lake, then an oasis and a lot of desert, this is where the ancient ruins of Durgurigalzu should be located, and several canals as you descend towards Baghdad and its four districts. Abbasia, Harbia, Kark and its Sharkia sub-district and of course the Round City. On the west of the City of Peace there is more wilderness but most importantly there is another pretty sizable area of the map at the south of Baghdad made up of desert but also supposedly some lush environments judging by the collectible map. The map will be uncovered as we explore the world, obviously, but we can also obtain some pointers to some interesting locations by visiting the cartographers around the world and paying them with tokens. Alright, let's dive deeper and have a look at the maps and areas that we visited. Anbar was the first area we tested in our preview session. Here we meet Basim in his three thief years after one of his nightmarish dreams, his longtime friend Nihal and the Wish, a local artifact dealer who actually protects some of the local kids and also gathers contracts for street thieves like Basim and Nihal to complete in exchange for money. In here we can have a look at how far Basim is willing to go to get noticed by the hidden ones who are indeed secretly working with the Wish, but the demo we tested was cut short in the middle of things so as not to spoil which act of deadly retribution Basim would do to be chased by guards and saved by Roshan as shown in the trailers. Still, I'd imagine all that happens within the boundaries of Anbar which is one of the villages located in the wilderness area of the world map and while it's no Baghdad it is pretty sizable it was an earlier capital of the caliphate after all and it has a huge palace on its eastern side, supposedly the caliph's winter palace judging by the map. Alamut has its own unique vibe because it is as important for Basim and the other main characters as it is for the Assassin's Creed lore and for many Assassin's Creed fans. It's a location in construction, in development, much as Basim during his training taking place in here. In the demo that we tried, we started in between, during one of Basim's training sessions with Roshan, who teaches him and the player both about parkour and the leap of faith, or leap of fail considering Basim misses it its first time, but don't worry, he's a trainee, he'll get there soon thereafter. We then moved on to explore the Hidden One's settlement placed at the base of the mountain where the fortress is being built and guys, there are a lot of information and references in there, I guess a mild spoiler warning is at hand in here, and these references are not just to the main Hidden Ones in the game and their past, but also to at least 3 Assassin's Creed games and even some proto-assassins that were introduced as far as Assassin's Creed 2 such as Iltani who is here erroneously introduced as one of the first founders of the Hidden Ones once, even though the Brotherhood was actually founded around three centuries later thanks to what I call the Great Ratcon of Assassin's Creed Origins. But anyway, let's not dwell too much on that. 
Alamut is also where we are going to meet the main Hidden Ones characters that we are going to see in the game, like Rebecca the blacksmith, two of the Banu Musa who are about to move to Baghdad, Fulav, the master assassin that was mentioned in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Roshan of course, and even the mentor Rayhan, who is indeed wearing the mentor of Alamut robe we had seen in Valhalla through the Roshan quest at the end of the post launch of the game, even though in there he was described as former master mentor of the Hidden Ones, and in Mirage he is described, at least in the prologue, as just mentor of the Alamut Brotherhood. This is also where Basim is going to meet his future pet Eagle and Kidu, by the way, with the game implying that also other Hidden Ones were training to use pet Eagles, and I'm not too sure how that is going to factor in the already hazy matter of how people can see through the eyes of their birds within the franchise. In Alamut, Basim can enjoy listening to the tales told by his fellow recruits and initiates and train with his first two, the throwing knives, and even in the basics of combat, so we can consider this too a tutorial area of sorts, at least in the demo that we tested, and this also seemed to be a second part of the prologue as it ended with the initiation ceremony of Basim into the Hidden Ones, which we can't show or discuss, but man, it did give me the chills, it was solemn, it was very cinematic, and it was visibly important for our main character and the characters surrounding him. As of now, my main worry with Alamut is that because there's no map available when you're there and it's not an area of the main world map like Anbar is and you can't even climb your way out of there, there is a non-zero chance that we might not get to Alamut anytime we want but only in specific story moments, much like it happened with many modern day areas that had very much the same features and limitations of the Alamut environment. I guess we'll see, I hope I'm wrong. I would very much prefer to be able to visit Alamut at any time. And finally, the area where we spent most of our demo playthrough was Baghdad, and I have to say, the city, its vibes and its visuals felt amazing. Baghdad really feels like a bustling city, possibly because of the increased crowd density but also because of the mixture of culture and people coming from different territories and continents, and you can see such a mix of cultures even just by walking in crowded areas like the bazaar, but the game also shows that through one of the black box missions which is about imported goods amongst other things. Baghdad is proper, classic, traditional main city of an Assassin's Creed game, organized in districts with several activities to do, main missions obviously, several vendors and other services to interact with, a lot of interesting things to be distracted by as you continue with your main mission and also get immersed and lost within the city. In the demo that we tested, we mostly visited Kark, the merchant district that features the bazaar and where the main black box mission and the investigation happening before it were taking place. From this part of the demo we could have a better look at the map of the city, especially its zoomed version, the density of the buildings, but also the density of the icons within the map and thus of the side activities, side missions and vendors which we are going to talk about in the upcoming videos. The game will also feature a pretty sizable wilderness area both north and south of Baghdad as we mentioned earlier, which according to the devs will comprise of a few different biomes and interesting locations to find, which will include the ruins of the ancient Mesopotamian city of Durgurigalzu and its Agarguf Ziggurat. In our playtest we didn't really get the chance to have a proper look at the wilderness outside of Baghdad, but we did catch a very brief glimpse of it when randomly escaping an outpost and when trying to get back in the city through the Sharkia gate, and also while doing our flyby of the city, but there is going to be much more of that in the game, with some creators actually being able to roam a bit of the area outside of Baghdad, so we can already have an idea about the vibes of this additional area. So you see, there's a lot to explore in Mirage, but of course it would be an empty world without something to do within it, which is something, the side content and activities in Mirage, that we're going to discuss in our next preview video. But if you can't wait for that, we have way more news and commentary about Assassin's Creed Mirage, its stealth, parkour and assassination pillars and way more in our latest video which you can see on screen right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in our next video.